Hello everyone. We are back at the dining room table. We are going to be doing our cash stuffing for the second pay period in August. Pretty basic. Let's see what we're working with. 100, 200, 300 dollars. 50, 400 dollars. 20, 40, 60, 80. 90, 500, 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 566 dollars is what we have today. So, first item up bat is triple A. Now, um, I actually just recently wrote on here that this is due on 915. However, they charge um, the account three weeks in advance. So it should be coming out uh, the last week of August. So coming up pretty soon because today is the 20th. So um, the typical amount that we contribute to this is $15. However, when I was looking at the renewal, the total amount for the renewal is $147 this year. And based on our little card here, we are over that amount. So the $15 that we would want to be putting towards this, um, I'm thinking we don't necessarily need to actually fund. Um, I will say that assuming that the 147 is stays true into next year, we will actually change the amount that we are going to be funding towards AAA uh, by a couple of dollars. So going forward, we will start funding at $13 per month rather than $15. And even that should put us over the $147 amount, and then that way, if there is an increase in the cost between now and the next year, hopefully that overage will cover it. I want to say it's about $6 more um, a month, or not $6 more a month, but $6 over what the $147 would be uh, at the new rate. So instead of funding this, we are going to take the $15 that would have gone to that and put it um, essentially aside. I have ideas of where I want to put this, but um, we'll see. We'll see where we land. So we can consider this for now fully funded. It is actually at the $150. And uh, when that charge comes through, we will be able to pay that out. And what I will actually do since it's $3 more is I'll try and break the money down so that we can retain the $3 in here, even though the new dollar amount, that $13 per month, will still put us over the, um, the amount that we're expecting. So there'll still be a little bit of an, an additional extra boost in the envelope. All right, so next is a birthday, um, and that is going to be $12. <laughs> well, somebody decided to um, augment uh, this, and um, apparently they did not enjoy the look that <laughs> our former president, or no, Mr. Hamilton here, uh, used to actually had, so people are funny. In case you, <laughs> you don't know what he's normally supposed to look like. There you go. Yeah, you, you, you got Smooth Daddy and then you got uh, Goatee Daddy there. <laughs> oh, people are funny. Okay, so we've got our $12. So what do we have total? We have 10, 20, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, $45. Now the 
um, nephew that is left for birthday money needs. Their birthday is in November, so um, we should have plenty of money in there to, to get him something. I have already been talking with his mother as to what he might want versus as well as, you know, what he might need um, because I... I don't mind being the aunt that buys, you know, clothes and socks and underwear and is very boring because there's things that they that they actually need to have um, and others will be getting them, you know, the video games and stuff like that. So uh, we'll just we'll just see where it lands. It'll probably end up being some kind of game, maybe for the switch or whatever. But, yeah, we'll see what what the uh, result ends up being. Okay, car maintenance, we do not do this pay period. Christmas, however, we do. And that is also $12. So let's see where we land. Get this all nice and organized. Ooh. -oh. So we have 50, 100, 20, 40, 50, 60, 75, 85, 90, 1, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, well that's actually 200, so 202, 203, two hundred and four dollars so two hundred and four dollars we are closing in on our our max uh whether we'll get there before we need to dip into this for christmas stuff um i'm not sure But we really probably should, just like with my nephew's birthday, since it's towards the end of the year, be getting some ideas of what the folks we will be getting gifts for actually want for Christmas. We'll see. Clothing gets $5. I did actually buy a whole bunch of socks. <laughs> Uh, socks are expensive for no good reason. I even got them on Amazon so that they, you know, like they're Amazon basics. So presumably they're not quite as expensive. Um, but it used up all of the $15 that we had because it was like $16 and something cents. So that ended up, you know, reducing some of our leftover money just by a little bit. Um, Oh, great. I have a hangnail-y thing. Um, but yeah, so I needed socks. Especially as we're getting into winter. I like my feet to be warm, except when I'm sleeping. Then they need to be cold with, you know, sticking out from the blankets while the fan is on. It is what it is, and there are no ex explanations. Uh, dine out is not done this time around. Entertainment is not done this time around. We have cleared those out. Um, we took a trip into the Ochoco um, National Forest area last weekend. It was beautiful out, though. <laughs> We we ran into a little bit of trouble. Um, there were a couple of sites that we wanted to check out. One was called uh, the Stein Pillar, and then there was a Twin Pillars thing, and that was where we were going to head first. We we're used to driving out in you know the boonies and nowhere, and roads being not great and everything. But the particular road we were on was just. So so bad. I mean, the dips in it were, I, I, it felt like the car could get stuck in one of them. Um, so 
you know, we made our way down. And then there is the turn off to head, you know, more directly to to the um, first site that we were going to check out. And as bad as that entry road was, the second one was even worse. And part of the, it, it wasn't necessarily the fact that there were, you know, I guess maybe it was erosion from rain and, and things like that, that were creating the the big old holes in there so that you're just like, blah, 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 blah. but there were also biggish rocks in the road too. So in this, this next section, there was a portion where there was such divots in the road that they were, and they were like right next to rocks so your car might be going down and then scraping against a rock if you're if you weren't careful um and we just decided you know what it's it's not worth it we do not want to come out of this with need <laughs> with the need to repair the car um so you know we we backed our way out and the area that we were in was lovely, you know, for what it is. It's a, it's a very um, kind of scrub brush, lots of cedar and juniper around, uh, plenty of trees. It was very, very hot. Um, lots of, you know, grasses and things like that. Uh, very different from the valley, the valley area that we live in, the Willamette Valley, um, which is, was a much... It's a much richer green because, you know, it gets a lot more rain and things like that. But gorgeous. Absolutely. Good. There, I don't think there's any place in Oregon that I've ever been to that I haven't been able to absolutely just appreciate deeply the natural beauty, no matter how different it is from any other place in the state. So you cannot go wrong as a general rule. If you're visiting Oregon and checking out its natural wonders. So we we backed out, we went um, and we found a little place to park. Um, there was like nobody around. So yeah, we probably could have just parked in the middle of the road if we really wanted to, but you know, we didn't do that. We found a place to park. We had our picnic lunch. We had been on the road for quite some time because I think it took us about three hours to get there. We ended up for anybody that is familiar with Oregon, um, we were coming from the Portland area and we stopped in, um, did we, I don't know if we stopped in Redmond. No, where did we stop? It was before Bend. Uh, oh, golly, I can't remember now. My brain is not working, but we stopped and got gas. And then we headed out towards, you know, Prineville, which is, on the way to where this was. Um, so we had our, we had our lunch finally. We just kind of hung out and then enjoyed the view. <laughs> there were, there clearly were people that owned land in the area because they had some fenced off stuff, but there were also cows <laughs> all around. So we, we got to enjoy watching a, a herd of cows kind of mosey through. They didn't know what to make of us because we kind of, after our, we'd had our lunch, we kind of got out and was just kind of walking around and, and looking at stuff. Um, and then these the, probably about 20 cats came by <laughs> and they were just kind of looking. I was like, hmm, I don't know if you belong here, but they were very cute. There were some babies with them. Um, so that was fun. Um, and everywhere we go, whenever we're out and about, I love to use my Seek app. So S-E-E-K. Uh, I believe it's linked to iNatural. Uh, but I use I use the Seek app exclusively, and it is when it decides to you know do what it's supposed to. Sometimes I've had trouble with it taking forever to try and determine what it is I'm looking at, which can be kind of frustrating, especially if you're crouching down. I got bad knees, um, but I love to go and you know hold the the app up to whatever it is, wait for it to do its thing, and it tell me you know what flower I'm looking at, what plant I'm looking at, and if if possible, what animal. Um, the animals I've found are a little bit harder because of how long it takes it to kind of determine what, what it is. Um, but I love that. That has been probably one of the best apps 
I have ever downloaded. And it was, as far as I, I don't remember paying anything for it. So it was free. Um, just to help increase my knowledge of the, you know, the natural world around me. I can't think of how many times we've been out and about and, you know, you see something that a pretty flower or an interesting tree and you're like, huh, I wonder what that is. And you don't have the opportunity to try and find out. So this has taken care of that. Um, and it's one of the highlights of going out into different environments because you just don't know what you're going to come across. And of course they have little things to, you know, poke the dopamine and <laughs> make you feel like you're accomplishing things because you get little badges and all this other stuff, but very fun. Um, and so we, we, we did a bunch of, of, of hunting around and seeing, you know, what, what's in this particular environment. We then decided, um, <clears throat> we needed, we, it was getting kind of late. So we were trying, I don't even remember if we were trying to find a way to get to the next place we were going to try and go to, or if it had gotten late enough that we were like, you know, we should probably start heading back home. But oh my gosh, it took us forever. It took us forever to get back to civilization. We were on, I think it was Cougar Butte and the roads weren't great in a lot of places. So, you know, we were, it was a little bit slow going there and we didn't read our map quite right, so we ended up taking a little bit of a longer <laughs> way to get to um, a known, you know, highway or road or whatever. But all the same, it was wonderful being out there. The weather cooperated quite well. Um, it's, it's things like that. Those are the things that I want to be spending my time on. And when I think about, you know, how limited we are in being able to have those times, you know, you're trying to squish them as a general rule into a weekend if you can. Now, me and Mr. M, our schedules right now are sort of compatible. It's nice because he typically has Thursday Friday and every other Saturday off. So on those weekends where he has the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, those were the ones we would target if we were going to go and do something and I was going to take time off. Um, I ended up as a general, I'm pretty sure I had more PTO than he did um, or have currently uh, when we were doing time off stuff. So we would just you know, organize stuff around what his actual days off were. But at the same time, it's every other Saturday. So there are some Saturdays that he has to sleep during the day because he's going to be working later that night. So, you know, the typical time frame when people are going out and about and enjoying adventures or doing things like that uh, are kind of cut in half. And I don't know how likely it is that we'll be able to change or accommodate um, being able to do more things like that, having that that work life balance. I, you know, honestly, I don't even want to say work life balance. I don't want it to be balanced. I want it to be more heavily on the life. Um, if I'm being honest about it, I. I want to work enough to be able to pay our costs, have a have some extra so that we can um, make the repairs that we need to make to our house and do general maintenance when it comes up to obviously, you know, pay off what debt we have and get that finally out the door, pay off our house and be investing in our future because we are not that far away from retirement. Yes, it's about 20 years, but boy, it sure seems like those years go by quick. Um, and then to, to have money to be able to enjoy, you know, getting out into nature, going and, and doing adventure stuff. I, I just, I don't want my whole rest of my life to be basically centered around work. Five days of the, of the week, eight to 10 hours a day is work. And then when you get home, you know, you have your home chores and you're tired and I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. 
Am I having a midlife crisis? Is that is that what this looks like? I mean, the um, stereotype of a midlife crisis for for men is that you know they start to to do stuff you know with their hair and, <laughs> and dressing a little better and buy a sports car and start chasing after younger women. What does what does a midlife crisis look like for for females? I'm not sure. I don't know if that's ever been patterned. Um, I know I've never, I haven't heard any jokes about it that I can think of. So I don't know if that's where I'm falling. If, if maybe it is, I don't know. Or maybe I'm just realizing that what I had before is just not speaking to me now. Um, but again, I don't know that I'll have the luxury to listen to that voice because we, we this world works on, on being able to pay for stuff. Gas, we do fund um, every pay period. So this pay period, we have our $100. I'm sorry. I know I'm getting kind of depressing <laughs> about my dissatisfaction with stuff. Um, but I feel like it's kind of just bubbling up. Um five dollars goes to gifts because I haven't had really the opportunity to examine you know just it, I've, I've been so immersed in the lifestyle in the rut that we've been in so it's we haven't had the opportunity to take a breath and take a step back and say hey is this really what we're wanting the rest of our lives to look like um, and obviously with what's going on that is something that we can kind of look at can we change anything is there a, truly an opportunity to create a different style of life I I don't know I don't know so we've got $15 here apparently I don't know if I didn't um, write this down right last time I must not have. It must. I should, probably should have written down ten dollars last time, and I wrote down five, because five was how much we were contributing. But we've got fifteen dollars for gifts. Uh, giving. We are not doing that this pay period. Groceries gets. Oops. Two hundred dollars. I was uh, looking at. I want to say it's the USDA website uh, because I had read or heard somebody mention, you know, certain facts about how about groceries and stuff like that. And I cannot remember the exact numbers now, but it was something like a male between the ages of, I want to say, 19 and 50, they say should the amount that they should be spending on groceries, and I take this as just food-related, because when we do groceries, we include things like kitty litter, mouthwash, you know, toothbrushes, things, things like that tend to get lumped in. But I'm assuming that this is purely food, edible stuff. Um, that the average amount, and they did have it broken down by different kinds of um, budgets. So one was like a an average budget, one was like a low cost budget and, and stuff like that. And this one I believe was for the average was 80, $81 per week is how much an adult male between 19 and 50, 50 years old should be spending um, on groceries. And a female in that same age range was 73, 76, something along those lines. I don't know why they think that a female needs, would spend less especially, well, if you're talking food, I guess there's not really a pink tax on food. So, so maybe the pink tax does not actually come into play, but I found it really interesting that that was kind of what they were stating should be the amount that gets spent. Um, so for our household, 
you know, that's 150 something dollars every week. And we're trying to hold it down um, on $100 a week. So that made me, on the one hand, feel good that we were being frugal and able to, you know, eat well um, within the limitations that we made. But it, at the same time, um, and I don't know if that had been updated for inflation, so I'll put that out there too. Um, at the same time, I'm like, should we be boosting our weekly grocery allotment? Um, for now, we're probably going to keep it as is because, like I said, we're eating decently. We, we're doing what we're doing. Um, there are certainly some things that we would purchase before that we're not nearly, you know, purchasing quite as much as now. Um, but so that's something to consider, but it was, a, it was an interesting thing. Uh, you might want to check that out and kind of see what there is to see if that is of interest to you. Uh, health gets $10. So we're at 20. We have definitely had our share of health costs coming recently from being sick um, and just needing to get other, you know, health related items. So we are down to $20 now with this $10 infusion. It's all goobery. Household does not get anything we we have kind of an IOU or had an IOU situation with household because we had to buy filters for the refrigerator. And what was the other thing that we had? Darn it, I can't remember what it was. But there was another thing on top of that that fit the household thing. So we, we've kind of been working in arrears with that one. I really don't like doing that, but these were things that we needed to purchase. So when they get funded, you know, we fund it and then we immediately put it back into the bank account. It's not necessarily keeping us um, even within the pay period, but we're paying ourselves back even if it's, you know, a couple of weeks late or whatever, however long the time period is. Um, so it kind of washes out. There's still effects, you know, on, you know, how much leftover we have in a particular pay period and that's how much we can put on our debt. But then the next pay period, we might have that little bit of extra because we've paid ourselves back. And so then it, we might have had a thing where we could have done or we would have only done $500 to debt. But because we paid ourselves back, we can now do $525 towards debt. It's just a pay period late. Anyway. License and fees gets $15. And this one is one that I have reviewed to do something a little bit different. So we got $15 there. Where are, there we go. Shove that in there. So we've got a total of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75, 85, 95, 105, 10, 15, and 20. So next, the next license that um, I need to pay for is my business, is one of our business licenses. So this next year, it should only be $100. So obviously we are over that requirement. The year after that, so 2026, it should be $150. Um, initially, the thought was we will get up to $250 because that covers, you know, two years worth. But um, I don't, I don't know that that's really necessary to be two years out or to even have a goal of being two years out because over time, since we do pay into this twice a month, um, we should catch up to whatever amount is required fairly easily um, before it's due. 
Uh, right now we're doing $15 per pay period or $30 per month. Starting next month, we are going to change that. That it is going to get reduced down to $11 per pay period or $22 per month. So um, what I have decided, and, and this idea came from one of the folks that watches the channel and made a comment, is we're going to keep it as a kind of um, a hybrid and make our total amount be maybe $200. So depending on where we land, because this comes due in March of every year, if we're adding $22 to this um, over the next, I have to count on my fingers, September, October, November, December, January, February, and then March, seven months, that's 140 something dollars. We will be well over the 150 um, or the, the $200 that we'll be going to because we only need, you know, 80 more uh, and that will be, that'll be four, four months from now. Anything extra, we are going to go and put into taxes because I feel like our tax option is limited. Let me actually cross these off. Doot, doot, doot. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Goodness, this is actually longer than I was intending. Once I get talking, once I get talking, all bets are off. Miscellaneous, we don't have anything at this time. Pets gets a hundred and twenty, forty, sixty dollars. Uh oh. I think we may have done something. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Okay. I'm all right. 160. We've also had some issues on the pet side, just with additional health costs. And of course we get a regular um, thing from Chewy for food. So we're at 100, 250, 70, 90, 310, or no, yeah, 100, 200, so 310, 320, 330, 335, 340, 345, three hundred and fifty dollars <throat> so obviously we've we've spent some money here pets are not cheap they are not cheap at all so three hundred and fifty dollars for pets and then we've got prime which is $12. Um, I don't think we are going to try and mat get to the $200 for Prime. I am not going to change the amount that we are contributing to Prime every month. It's going to stay at the $12 because when I went and I looked at what the cost was, I believe it was $139. So if you're doing $12 a month for 12 months, $144, you're, you're covered. Um, once we get up over the hundred and thirty nine dollars um we will stop funding this so essentially um we'll probably make our our limit like 150 or something like that and then um either just stop allocating money to that or if we need to um need to we can take the amount that was going to go to prime hold it aside and backfill uh other other areas if that seems more of an appropriate way of utilizing the money but once this gets paid off and we're we're doing the 12 because this I think we kind of extra funded a little bit when we first got started with this and that's why we're we're looking a little a little heavy um I think uh we'll be like right on target 
in the next year when, when this stuff comes around. So we got 50, 70, 80, 90, 110, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, $120. So September will put us at 132, October will put us at 144. So that in October, that will be the last time that we actually fund this until, dis, until January. Um, and then we'll start funding again because then we'll have the 144 by the end of the next year for when this comes due because this comes due in December. Um, <clears throat> if for some reason the price goes up, then we can, of course, make some adjustments as needed. Um, so we've got a couple more months before we will consider this fully funded. Oh, I need this guy too. And we'll doot, doot, doot. doot. I mean, on the other hand, you know, for November and December, we could just decide not to fund at all so that we have an overall reduction in the amount of money that goes to cash envelopes. And of course, that would mean um, more money to go towards debt and or savings. That'll just have to be a decision we make. Uh, we're not doing anything with this savings. It just kind of sticks to the back. And then taxes gets $20. And this is one where I kind of feel like we have not um, saved enough. We made kind of the decision of how much we were going to do for taxes, which is $20 per pay period or $40 a month based on what we thought we were going to bring in from Etsy. Um, and our Etsy sales have been a little bit higher than in originally intended, or not intended, expected. Um, we could be absolutely overfunding this and my paranoia of not wanting to have uh, a tax bill that we can't pay uh, might be unfounded. But um, I would much rather we overfund than under, so that is why the taxes one will be kind of a catch-all if we do have extra money, at least for right now. And then next year, we'll probably look at whether we need to change to maybe a $25 per month in, or per pay period instead of $20, because um, it really does depend on what comes in as far as sales and you can't necessarily predict that. So we've got 120, 40, 60, 80, 220, 40, 60, 85, 95, 96, 97. Is that right? Yes. 297. Okay. 297. I can't remember because I've got a spreadsheet that's doing kind of the, the calculation of here's here's the income that's come in, multiple you know, multiply it by whatever <coughs> excuse me, tax percentage. So this is how much taxes you know we're accumulating as things come in. Plus I'm including the cost of you know TurboTax or and that any filing fees in the overall tax cost as well. So it's not just here's income that's coming in and there's tax that we'll have to pay on it, but it's kind of the whole gamut of, of tax stuff. Um, and I can't remember what we're looking at as of you know second pay period of August on what we think we're going to be owing for the year and how much we have saved up. But I'm pretty sure that we are short. So $297. Um, since we do have this overage, and as I said, I'm concerned that we are going to be light on this, we're going to add this 10 or this $15 to the mix. So I'm going to just do a plus 15 since that's an extra. And then you can watch my brain explode while I try and do a very, very simple math. 
late at night. It's not that late. It's almost 11. <laughs> but it sounded like a good excuse to me. Okay, so that's going to be 307 and a 312. So we're actually at 312. And I'm going to have to try and remember that so that I can look at my spreadsheet and see, you know, how, how far off um, we are based on my very over conservative <laughs> um, calculations. And by over conservative, I mean calculating a higher tax than will probably be charged, but better, better safe than sorry. Uh, still full. This dram still is not doing his job. But you know what? He is the one that has expressed regular irritation about all of the junk that is around the house, in particular on our back porch and in other areas. So obviously it is not as bad as um, it could be or else he would be on top of getting things going for this. So. Uh, yard cleanup. Okay, so I'm not really good at doing savings challenges and stuff like that. <clears throat> Other people have, you know, very nice processes and fancy, fancy, fancy stuff. Um, I'm not good at it, but I am keeping track of how much money we are saving in our account because it is based on an auto transfer um, from our checking to one of our savings accounts. So we are not going to actually be seeing this in cash form as a general rule. And that is why I made this so that I can keep track of how much is there. So this $100 noted uh, is from the first pay period of um, August. This is from the second pay period of July. So we are also going to fill out the $100 that's going to be coming out. It hasn't yet but it's slated to come out, um, no, I want to use a different color, on the, oh, I guess this is green. Well, we're going to have a green coin. Uh, 23rd, I think, something like that, of August. So we'll just, we'll just make sure that that gets, that gets noted. So by the end of this month, we'll have $300 going towards yard cleanup. We're trying to get to 2500 so this is going to take some time, um, assuming that we don't find extra money somewhere to uh, boost, boost our numbers up. Uh, so those blackberries may be with us for another year or so, but that's okay. We'll see. We, I, I will admit that we are enjoying... Um, charging those blackberries rent and plucking their delicious fruit. And I think I mentioned we have something like two or three pounds of blackberries in our freezer already. And there's definitely a bunch left to get. It's just, you know, combating <laughs> the thorns to try and get to them because they're always in the most inconvenient place. All right. So that is it. I am going to make this closing quick so that we can stay under 45 minutes or at 45 minutes. Thank you for watching. As always, if you have any feedback, suggestions, or just want to say hi, please note those down in the comments. If you want to follow along and see how we're doing on our journey, please consider subscribing. We are at, I want to say like 880 people. So thank you everybody who has joined, who has been watching. I very much appreciate you spending your time with us because I know you don't have to. Um, and we'll see you in the next one.